Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT with another, I guess you call it a car cast. Only this time the car is a different car. This is uh, my 1995 Nissan 300ZX. It's the 2 plus 2 uh, model with the T-tops. Woo! T-tops. Um, no, the slick top uh, and convertible were much rarer anyway. Uh, the 2 plus 2 meaning it has two back seats, which it doesn't really have. It's good for storage. I guess you get baby seat back there or throw some groceries. Um, and I just absolutely love this car. And you can pick one up for like $3,000. Uh, it's complete steal these days. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about hopefully over the engine noise and the wind noise because I'm not closing the T-tops on a day this hot. Um, I wanted to talk about the N plus one problem in EVE Online. And the N plus one problem, if you don't know what it is, it's something that uh, comes up a lot in EVE and not so much in other games and, and there's a reason for that. And it, basically what N plus one means, means that it's very difficult to balance the game because no matter how many ships you have, if you bring 100 ships to a fight, your opponent can bring 101 ships. If you bring 300 ships, your opponent can bring 301 ships. And the reason that this problem is kind of unique to EVE Online is because in most games, there's not an unlimited number of people that can come to any given fight. So if you're playing, say, Call of Duty, Team Fortress 2, if you're playing FIFA 2016, if you're playing chess, no matter what game you're playing, there's usually some kind of limit on the number of people that can come to any given fight. But in EVE Online, it's not team-based, it's not arena-based, and it, there's, it's not server-based. It's not even like WoW where, yeah, there's thousands of people, but there's still servers. Like, there's one server in EVE, and all, however many accounts, you know, I've heard estimates 400,000 to 600,000, hundreds of thousands of accounts in EVE Online can all be online in one time, and they can all technically come to one giant fight so there's no upper limit and that makes balancing an eve very difficult because you can't just say like for instance in team fortress 2 there's a strict number of soldiers that can be on a team at any given time and that number is based on the server so if you have a 12 person server there can only be 12 soldiers if you're playing highlander mode there can only be one of each class so there can only be nine people on each side and one person of each class but in eve you can bring 5,000 stealth bombers to a fight if that's what you wanted to bring. You can bring 5,000 titans to a fight if, if you have 5,000 titan pilots. So this is typically seen as a problem in EVE Online. It leads to blobbing. Blobbing basically being just bring the best ships you can or the best fleet composition you can with the most number of people in that fleet and you will stomp out the other person because whatever they bring, you can bring exactly that except more, or you can bring its counter, and you can bring it in droves. The N plus one issue of having an unlimited size of teams, you know, it really sucks to be driving this beautiful car at 42 miles an hour on the highway, but I guess we're just hitting a little bit of traffic here. I love this car. Did you know that the Nissan 300ZX was one of the first cars designed in like a computer-aided design, like an AutoCAD? And that's part of what makes its beauty stand out today. I mean, you look at how this car looks compared to the Z, the Zs from the 1980s, and there's a stark difference. Like those cars were trying to be futuristic. The Z was trying to be classic, and it succeeded. Uh, the 1990 to 1996 Z, um, with the 1996 kind of being a pseudo collector's edition final run. So this 1995 is pretty much the most reasonable, you know, up-to-date version you get. Anyway, there are other compounding factors that make the N plus one blobbing and Eve Online bad. And I just want to go through those really quickly because I think that these are things that are unique to EVE um, which maybe don't show up in other games which is why it gets so bad in EVE. So when you think about blobbing in other video games or in real life, it usually has some issues with it. One is it's physically not possible because it's a team-based game. We already covered that. Another one is, is terrain, all right? So in video games or in real life, terrain plays a big factor in limiting the power of a giant blob. So, like, think about the movie 300 or the real-life historical, you know, uh, setup where the Spartans held off the Persians at a narrow mountain pass long enough, you know, with the help of Greece, other Grecian troops, but long enough for reinforcements to arrive for the for the city-states of Greece to, to get in a position to hold off, you know, to hold off Persia for real. So basically what that meant was there was terrain, there was this, this narrow mountain pass 
And what that meant is that even though the Persians outnumbered the Greeks by factors, gigantic factors, hundreds to one, thousands to one, if, if only 50 people could fight at a time in that narrow mountain pass, then, it, then that gigantic advantage wasn't such a big deal. Because what that meant is that as long as they could get an impasse, they could reach a stalemate, or that the Spartan and Grecian troops at the front lines were better on a 50 to 50 ratio than the average, you know, 50 Persians, that they could win. So that's, that's a huge thing. Having, having um, any kind of terrain or landscape is big. You look at a game like, like uh, StarCraft, right? StarCraft is another big deal with this. Like you have ramps, you have choke points, you have high and low ground that can be taken advantage of. So just because your enemy has five, you know, 200 Zerglings to bring at you, they still have to go through a valley of death to get there. They still have to go past, you can wall them off with your static defenses while your troops that are that could normally be surrounded by zerglings can take pot shots at them from behind those defenses. You can force them to go through a narrow tunnel um, and then essentially hit them with, with all kinds of range stuff before they can get into range. So terrain is a big deal. And we see immediately in EVE Online you have a fucking problem because it's in outer space. When you're in outer space there's no terrain. and you and yeah, there's there's asteroid belts that can cause bumping, and there are there are other minor terrain, and you have terrain in the sense of a constellation has terrain. There are astro there are stargates that you have to jump through, or there are wormholes that you have to jump through. Those are choke points in one way, but you know where the battles are taking place. Like once the ships are on grid, there isn't there's no uphill. You know when you're fighting next to a planet, the gravity of the planet doesn't affect you. So. You know, you could say, oh, well, maybe you fight near a planet or a moon and the, the group that's farther away from the planet has an advantage because the people that are closer to the planet are going to be sucked in harder by the atmosphere. They're going to be getting atmospheric resistance by satellites and air and stuff that are in upper orbit. Doesn't happen in EVE Online. So that's, that's number two. Terrain doesn't properly exist in EVE Online which means that there's nothing to stop your blob from just moving forward, from surrounding the enemy, and just absolutely letting the numbers, you know, decide the battle. The number three thing that typically matters, okay, in, in, in blob warfare is line of sight. This is something you see in video games. This is something that you see in real life. So when, when there's line of sight, what that basically means is that you can't shoot through obstacles like terrain and you can't shoot through friendly units and the friendly units also allow there to be more leniency of shooting so let me give some examples if you're playing uh, counter-strike right if you're playing counter-strike and your your team is trying to move through a doorway what that does is the doorway is terrain right only one person can walk through at a time so that that's a huge factor but it's also line of sight which means that if you're entering a doorway with your team and the opposing team the terrorist team is already set up in that room they're all facing that doorway they all have line of sight in that doorway anything that comes in through that doorway they can all see instantly and obliterate it with their guns okay but when you are the counter terrorist walking into that doorway you open the door and you you have to scan the room you can't see everything at once because you only have a certain field of view and of course you're disoriented you don't have the same information that the other team has so you need to establish line of sight you need to see your targets and then oh god okay so uh, I apparently did not secure the Sun thing uh, on the, up here correctly so there you go I just got bopped in the head and now I have line of sight on the sky I did take that off before because it was casting a weird shadow on my head so there you go, I'll leave that in to the blooper reel. It also, what line of sight also means, and now I'm gonna be all dark because I can't, because now the sun's gonna be shining on you. What line of sight also means is that the people, your teammates who are behind you are obstructed by your body. They can't shoot the, the bad guys because they either can't see them because your body's blocking them or because their bullets can't hit them because your body's blocking them. 
if you if they want to shoot the bad guys, they have to shoot through you. So if friendly fires on, they're gonna kill you accidentally. Or if friendly fires off, their bullets are gonna be absorbed by your body, basically being completely wasted. Their ammunition uh, and and whatnot is gonna to go to waste. So line of sight allows a smaller team to potentially beat a blob because there could be four terrorists in that room and there could be 10 counter terrorists outside but if they have to come in one at a time and only one of them can shoot at a time whereas the terrorists can all see everything at once and all four of them can shoot at once without shooting their own teammates or being blocked by their own teammates or being blocked by the door they have a huge advantage the blob doesn't factor there individual skill and preparation are what factor there so in EVE Online, that doesn't exist. In EVE Online, first of all, like I said, the terrain doesn't exist. Most of the places are in the middle of outer space where there are absolutely no obstacles. You're orbiting a planet, there's a planet 5,000 kilometers away, and then there's the fucking blackness of outer space. No terrain there. Um, you're in an asteroid field, but the, the fact of the matter is while your ship can bump into it, and that their orbits and movement are limited by an asteroid field, um, your line of fight and line of fire are actually not limited. So if you can lock your target, your guns, missiles, and drones will hit it. I suppose drones might be slightly more impeded by their movement by the asteroids, but that's about it. So actually, if there's like a giant asteroid in front of you and you have your target locked, you can fire your guns as long as they're in range, you will still hit them. Your guns don't get blocked by the asteroid, whereas they would get blocked you know, in other places. And for instance, StarCraft doesn't have line of sight. Your units on the ground, as long as they're in range, typically can just shoot. So StarCraft has terrain, but it doesn't have line of sight or line of fire uh, for the most part. Whereas something like Counter-Strike has both terrain and it has line of sight and line of fire. And EVE Online does not have real terrain or real line of fire. Um, and then let's go into the last thing. The last thing that prevents blobbing, okay, is area of effect damage or area denial. And this is something which is very simple. Again, going back to StarCraft, if you, if your enemy is coming at you with thousands of ground units or even hundreds of ground units, you can use siege tanks and colossuses, colossi, I'm sorry, you can use lurkers, you can use whatever, you can use units that hit huge areas of the ground at once. And they don't even necessarily need to do lots of damage, but they need to hit like 10, 20, 30 units at once. And all of a sudden having a giant blob of units is not a good idea. So that's in StarCraft, right? And then you look at something like a first person shooter, like Counter-Strike. If you're all blobbed up in that room, let's say, sure, you have four terrorists in the room, that's fine. They're watching each corner, they're watching the door. If you have an entire team of, let's say, 18 people in that room, the counter-terrorist team can throw in grenades and the grenades provide area of effect damage that can hit multiple terrorists at once. It's also area denial. They can throw down um, Molotov cocktails. They can throw down smoke grenades. They can obfuscate you know, a large amount of the area at once. So basically what this means is that even if you have a numbers advantage, if you're clumped up or you're in an area um, that's constricted in any way, a smaller force can use relatively weak weapons, but weapons that apply to multiple targets at once um, to, to have an effect, to gain an advantage. In EVE Online, that actually does exist. Um, ships can have smart bombs that go on their own ships that produce an explosive effect around the ship that do very low damage directly around it. So you'll see this on larger ships, battleships and up, that can kill incoming missiles, kill incoming bombs, kill drones, kill really small ships, frigates, and the like that are orbiting very close. To some extent that exists in EVE, um, but it's very limited. You also have bombs that are launched from stealth bombers that can apply damage that's typically best against uh, battle cruisers, battleships, and slightly larger ships, although once you go to much larger ships, they of course have massive amounts of hit points. So those bombs exist and they serve their purpose because they do kill off blobs of battle cruisers and battleships, but of course they don't really stop blobs of smaller ships, frigates, 
uh, destroyers and cruisers and they don't stop blobs of capital ships and super capital ships because the bombs just don't do enough damage. They can, they, you know, I'm not saying they're irrelevant in those two scenarios. All I'm saying is there's no real fight there. So terrain, line of sight, slash line of fire, um, and area of effect attacks are typically the most common ways to stop blobbing, to stop huge groups of people just outnumbering other people. Now there's a common objection saying these things don't actually favor the smaller group. That if you have giant bombs and area of effect attacks, that the person that brings 601 stealth bombers will still beat the person that brings 600 stealth bombers. And that's true. That's absolutely true. But the whole point of um, having any kind of mechanics that fight against a blob or, pu or punish blobbing up is not to stop N plus one because there will always be there will always be a number of a larger group that beats a smaller group. For instance, if I have 10 guys with, with, with machine guns, right, with assault rifles or whatever, and you had 10 guys with swords and they start 100 feet from each other, the guys with guns will clearly win. If you have 100 guys with swords and the 10 guys with assault rifles, the guys with guns will still win. But if you had 10,000 guys with swords, the guys with swords would win. There's always going to be a number that that, that, that 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 factor, that that power factor can't beat, all right? But the point of anti-blob, anti-N plus one mechanics is not to say there's no number, there's no number that could be overcome. The whole point is just saying that it doesn't become N plus one, it becomes N plus N times two or N times three or N times four. It's a force multiplier saying that if you are in a giant blob, that basically there's a significantly fewer number of people that need to bring anti-blob weaponry to beat you. Of course, if and if and and of course the mechanics need to be balanced there too. You know, in most games, the units that have AOE attacks um, or or anything like that are either very slow or very fragile. So, for instance, or they do very low damage. So you look at siege tanks in StarCraft, they're, they're basically immobile. They need to go into siege mode and stop moving in order to do splash damage. So if, if you have increased mobility or you have air superiority, you can still beat their splash damage in range. If you look at things like grenades in Counter-Strike, like they have a relatively small range. They're definitely not like a gun where they shoot across the map and they don't do crazy amounts of damage. They can't kill you in one shot. So for instance, stealth bombers in EVE Online are very fragile ships. The bombs have relatively medium range. They do high damage to their intended targets, but they do very low damage essentially to targets that they're not good at hitting. That, that's essentially what they do. And, they're, and it's very easy to evade them or to tank them if you're not a battleship or battle cruiser comparatively speaking. So the reason I'm bringing all this stuff up is that I think, you know, people are always complaining about M plus one in EVE Online. And if they want N plus one to be fixed, more anti-blobbing mechanics have to be implemented into the game. Like that's just it. You look at every video game that's ever been made and those are the mechanics that stop blobbing. Area of effect damage, friendly fire, line of sight, line of fire, terrain, high ground, low ground, you know, things like that. That's it. Like, th that, that's what stops it. And of course, there's only a couple things beyond it that could possibly stop it. And those are kind of meta mechanics, right? For instance, if, if your game makes it very easy to backstab or screw over your teammates, then you can beat a block, right? So for instance, if, if, if you're, if there's a, an objective based game, capture the flag, right? And if you capture the flag for your team and then you go hide in a corner and you do not bring it back to your base, you can backstab your team essentially, then you are essentially able to counter your team's blob. Because it doesn't matter how many people are on your team, if they can't catch you or find you, you can hurt your own team. And if you're the enemy, you can infiltrate that team and screw them over. So backstabbing is a major mechanic. And to some extent, backstabbing exists in EVE, right? 
the larger your corporation or alliance grows, the more people could be in it who would want to backstab you and the more anonymous the average person is in it. If there's only three people in a corp, you know, how much, how many people could they possibly hurt at once? But one person who can leak the information of thousands of people or who can man the Citadel guns during a major fight and fire on the key ships, you know, of, of, of the defending fleet could have some power. So that's another anti, anti blob mechanic in some ways. All right, infiltration and backstabbing. And that can always be tuned up or down, depending how it goes. Like the high sec AWOXing has just been tuned down in EVE. Other mechanics may be tuned up. And the last like throwaway blobbing, anti-blobbing feature that exists in some games is essentially, well, it, it, it does exist, but it's diminishing returns. Diminishing returns punish blobbing because it means that Yes, the more you have of something, the more powerful it is, but it's not necessarily linearly more powerful or exponentially more powerful or geometrically. It gets less and less more powerful uh, the more powerful you get. So for instance, look at a game like Warcraft 3. In Warcraft 3, they looked at Starcraft 1, they saw how many Zerglings blob, uh, attack move mechanics, having tons of zealots and stuff like that. And they said, we don't want that for Warcraft. We want Warcraft to be smaller fights. But we don't want to outright, you know, just completely limit people's wars. Like, people can still have wars, but we want to encourage smaller groups. So what they did was they still had terrain. They still had, you know, area of effect attacks. But they also had taxing. And what that meant was they had upkeep. That yes, you could have an army of 50 people. But when you had an army of 60 people, that army cost more to maintain than the army of 50 people. Like, it didn't cost just 20% more because 60, 20% more of 50. It cost like 30% more. And then when you had an army of 80, it was taxed as if you had an army of like 120 people. I don't remember the exact numbers, but you get the idea. Your farming was less effective. Your, 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 your gold mining and your wood chopping and all that stuff was less effective. In EVE Online, there is diminishing returns on your modules on your own ship. So, for instance, the more damage multiplying modules like ballistic controls you have on your missile boat, the less effective each one is. But there's nothing that really affects the diminished the returns on adding more ships to a fleet, other than just the mental headache of having to deal with them. And there really isn't, that's really not a big deal. There's always that human factor. But there's no reason that something like that couldn't be added. So for instance, a lot of people have asked for diminishing returns on remote repairs. And what that means is right now, if I'm repairing, shooting my repair beam uh, at, an, at a friendly unit, let's say it gets healed at 500 hit points a second. If another friendly logistics ship fires their repair beam, now it's being repaired at 1,000 hit points a second. And what that basically means is that repairs are always completely uh, effective to their full extent. So anyway, there's no diminishing returns on a lot of stuff in EVE. Everything that has to do with what your ships actually do. You know, when multiple ships are mining the same rock, they mine at the same efficiency. There's, yes, there's minor inefficiencies that involve cycles and the rock dying at certain points. But for the most part, the loss of efficiency isn't there. Right now, the, the engine of EVE Online does not really support diminishing returns on remote repairs, which is why it doesn't happen. Which is why it's not like an option that's really on the table, which is a shame. But people still want it. But in my opinion, there are ways to add diminishing returns or to reduce um, blobbing efficiency with something like remote reps. So for instance, I played the game EVE, uh, not, yeah, I played EVE Online. I played the game Guild Wars uh, 1 for a long time, and I played a lot of competitive arena. And in competitive arena, you know, it's 4x4, four 8x8, four, eight eight, um, and you had healers in that game, and your healers would of course have to heal the team. Now you didn't have N plus 1, but diminishing returns and overhealing was a really big deal. And the reason was, was there were small heals and large heals, and the large heals were the kind of thing that saved people from dying 
at the last minute, right? But they used a lot of energy, and if you had multiple people on the team spiking, if you, someone on your team was getting spiked, and they were gonna, you know, go down really fast, they're getting alpha with like basically sniping, um, and you and multiple healers try to heal them at the same time, you would waste your resources, you would waste your energy. So for instance, if, if someone had, was down to one life out of a maximum 100 life, and you go to heal them with a plus 100 life heal, okay, you would save their life, that's great. But if the other two healers on your team saw your teammate at one life and freaked out and also used their plus 100 life heal, now that person only got the effect of one, per, of one giant heal because they only have 100 life, there's no overhealing. Um, and the other two healers wasted their heals, wasted their energy that it costs to use their heals, so they're gonna have less resources to cast more heals, and the cooldown on that giant heal is now wasted. So in my opinion, if you want to implement um, diminishing returns in EVE, what you have to do is essentially increase the spike factor in EVE. So if you have healing, right? If you have healing, whether it's local or remote, and if you want to nerf that, or if you want to make it harder to use efficiently or harder to stack, right? What you do is you, you double the amount of healing it gives. You double the amount of time, like the cooldown time on it. You double the amount of resources that it takes. So the amount of heals per second is still the same. The amount of resources, capacitor, or ammunition or whatever that it uses over the same amount of time is the same. But what changes is that the timing is much more critical and your ability to respond to threats in real time goes down drastically. So whether it's remotely of you trying to help another person, so if a ship is getting seriously alphaed and it, it, you see it take huge amounts of damage and you think it's primary and you guys are trying to heal it, it's harder, whether you're multi-boxing or working with other people, to not waste your heals because when they switch targets, now if they switch targets and that target's going down, right? Now all of your repairs are in a longer cooldown cycle and you have less capacitor available to, hit, to help you know, repair those ships that are now primary. If your local reps, if you are running, let's say, a dual rep build, and, and you're trying to cycle your reps at the right time, and you're getting hit really hard, you have to be much more judicious in turning on or off your reps, because the amount they're gonna rep, and the amount you could waste, is gonna be huge, and the amount of time that you have to wait, if you made a mistake, is now double what it used to be. And I'm just using double as a number. It could be up 50%, it could be up 500%, it could be up whatever you want. So the effectiveness, the overall effectiveness of those units for small groups or for small 1v1s is not affected as much. And I, you know, before someone skewers me alive, yes, it's fucking affected. I'm not an idiot, all right? But you know what I'm saying. But when you get into group mechanics where you have large numbers of support people and large numbers of people hitting the same target and switching targets, and I'm just talking broadly for all games, then having longer cooldowns and bigger spike factors makes it harder to be less efficient. So basically what I'm saying is, if we want to stop N plus one in EVE, if we want to, if we want to stop the blob factor or at least tone it down, because like I said, there's always going to be an N plus X. There's always going to be some number of zombies or people with swords or zerglings that can overrun you, right? Oh, some big potholes then we need to do something about it. And we need to look at what's realistic. What's realistic in EVE is implementing spike factor. Spike factor can be implemented with existing code very easily. You just gotta tweak the numbers, just like I said, and make things more spiky, okay? And that will cut down on the efficiency of having more damage or more repairs or more whatever. Next is area of effect or area denial or in mass shooting like stuff that just hits lots of targets, whether it's, you know, a Molotov cocktail effect that sits in space and does low damage over time, whether it's something like a bomb that explodes and hits lots of stuff for high damage but has a really long cooldown. Maybe it's something like a chain lightning effect or like an Ender's Game chain reaction effect or something that just bounces off targets or that splinters off targets or sweeps through targets or anything like that. Um, 
those things all punish blocks. Now those things are also very taxing on the EVE Online server, which is why you don't see a lot of e, uh, massive area of effect damage. But if you have something long, long cooldown, all right, like I don't think there should be some fire mechanic that does ticks every second hitting hundreds of ships. That's gonna kill the servers. But if you have some long cooldown thing, um, that's a completely different ball game, all right? Next, you have line of sight. Um, you have line of sight and line of fire. I don't think that's ever gonna be implemented at EVE. It could, in theory, I don't know if it's physically possible, but the idea of your guns not being able to shoot through friendly units, your, your, your guns not being able to shoot through asteroids, your missiles using up extra flight time because they have to fly around friendly targets to get to the enemy target. Um, I would love to see that in EVE. It would definitely be a buff to missiles, uh, a nerf to guns, and put a huge emphasis on formations, tactical, using the Z-axis, all that stuff would be way more important with line of sight and line of fire, um, but I don't know if it's physically possible. And finally, terrain. Terrain, again, I don't know if that's possible to do in EVE. In a lot of ways, that overlays with line of sight and line of fire. Can asteroids block you? Can asteroids do things other than be a pain in the ass? I would love it, for instance, if because asteroids um, are a huge pain in the ass. We could add asteroid belts to every planetary orbit to add more terrain to it, kind of like the shattered planets have those asteroids flying around. Um, but I also love it if, for instance, capital ships, we're, we're looking for like what is a role the capital ships can do, right? And one thing that I've suggested or talked about is it would be interesting if capital ships could uh, interact with terrain. So if, for instance, asteroid belts were a type of terrain, or planets or, or suns or something like that, sorry, you know, basically could use up terrain, could block you, then if capitals could push them or obliterate them, get them out of the way, then that would give them a really cool reason to be on field, to clear the fucking way or to block the way or whatever. And of course, using their giant ass spaceship hull to block the way. Anyway, that pretty much covers it. That's really all I have to say about this topic. I'm not, I'm not personally saying that the blob and M plus one warfare is the largest problem in EVE. I don't, I think there's plenty of other major balance problems and other things that need to be fixed in the game. Um, but I, knew, I do know that something that comes up a lot, a lot of people wonder about and they wanna know how to fix it. I think if you look at real life and you look at other video games, literally any other video game ever made, that all the mechanics I talked about today are the main ways that you can uh, basically stop blob warfare. I hope this was interesting, um, and I hope what I said makes some sense, and I hope people uh, give it a chance, think it through. Oh, and uh, hey, hey, hold on a second, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. oh good. it's pretty, uh, man, it's really hot today. Here we go, whoa. Absolutely beautiful, look at this thing, Jesus. That is just... Well, everyone, I'm Wingspan TT, the fourth best commentator on YouTube. I hope this made some sense. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the video comments and just in general. Let me know. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.